<laughs> Do I need to say any more for those who are watching? If you're listening, I have to describe to you the Christmas spirit that I think is just oozing out of me. It's oozing out of you. It's oozing on top of your head, really, if you want it's to get the technical. It's Santa hat. It's a Santa t-shirt that says ho, ho, ho. And I'm, 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 I'd like to say I'm in a medium t-shirt. I've managed to squeeze into a medium t-shirt. I've pulled this out <laughs> from years ago. It's definitely snug. But I'm very proud that I'm approaching my four months of my diet. Yeah. And I'm I'm technically clothed by a medium shirt. Now, would I leave the house in the medium shirt? I might need about another five pounds off of me I for it to fit comfortable. Nice, honey. But I wanted to rock a different shirt uh, for the Christmas spirit because I want to talk about Christmas movies. I think everybody, this is going to be the weekend that things really just go full on Christmas. Oh, I think we've 100%. enjoyed the fake snow, some people the real snow. Mm-hmm. I know my uh, parents, my dad sent me a picture. It snowed for the first time in Ashtabula, Ohio. Aww. So the snow is real. The hot cocoa is real. The Baileys is real. Yep. The Baileys is calling my name. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it through the holiday season without having some Baileys. So we will see. We will will see. see. Um, But let's hop into today's episode. Today's sponsor is Truebill. How many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, long after forgetting to cancel? Well, you can now fight back against subscriptions that you no longer want with Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. So if you don't want to fall for the for the subscription scams, you can start canceling today at truebill.com slash Freddie and Alyssa. Again, that is truebill.com slash Freddie and Alyssa and start saving yourself some money. The app puts everything in one place uh, for you. So this way you don't have to log into 17 different websites, know all the passwords, forget to cancel, get charged $14.99. And out of pure laziness, just say, oh, I'll get to it. And then you never do. I'm not speaking from experience or nothing like that. But we have been being charged for the home workouts ever since 2019. Because they charge me every three months. And I forget to cancel and I'm getting pot 40 bucks. So this is why an app like Truebill is super helpful just so that you can like stay organized and lower the monthly overhead so the extra cash you have can be spent on Christmas cookies, Christmas (laughs) gifts, or investing or anything else that you'd like to do. And Bitcoin, honey. (laughs) And Bitcoin. Everybody who's involved in Bitcoin, we made, we have this ongoing joke that... (laughs) I decided after taking a three year break from investing in Bitcoin because I was taken, I was, I got, I was, what's the saying? I was taken to to the the, cleaners. I was taken to the cleaners. I was doing well, had false confidence, didn't pull out in time, sold low, just just lost a stupid amount of money back in 2017. I can't even talk about it. And I didn't stick to my initial gut instinct of like, Bitcoin is going to stay around forever. That's just my opinion. Why didn't I at least keep like a little bit of money in there? But we had other plans and we didn't. But as soon as I started investing again, I was feeling super confident. And I think it's already now hit another low that it hasn't hit since July. So I feel like whoever's watching, they called a board meeting and they said, hey everyone, Freddie Smith is investing again. Let's tank the price. Take it, take and, it. Uh, but no, we're doing good. We're investing like small amounts, nothing crazy, like the first time. <laughs> but hey, you live and you learn, right? Yeah, I've learned. Now I'm doing it respectfully. Good, good, responsibly. Responsibly. That's right. And respectfully, I respect the blockchain. <laughs> <You're> res- <laughs> Anywho. Circle back with me next December and we'll see where Bitcoin's at. Is that a deal? It's going to be very, who knows, but (laughs) we will see. Who knows? We will see. We shall. So today is December 8th and we are just a couple weeks away from Christmas. So I know for me, this is the time of the month where Christmas activities kind of get serious. Do you agree? Like now everyone's like actually putting their trees up if they were someone who holds off to do it in December. Um, it was crazy because I had a photographer reach out to me and she's like, yes, I'd love to collab, shoot you and your husband. We could do a really fun Christmas shoot. I'm like, sign me up. However, she tells me 
it's ice skating, which I grew up ice skating. I think it's so much fun. It's such a cool thing to do, especially with a significant other. So I tell her, yes, absolutely, let's do it. And I tell Freddie all excited, and he goes, oh, that's cool, but I've never ice skated before. <laughs> And I go, have you rollerbladed or roller skated? Which you have, correct? Yeah, 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 I've done both. I know how to do both of those, but I've never got on ice before. I don't think there's much difference because um, there was this place by my house that we would always go in middle school on Friday nights and they would put the lights on the ice and music and you'd go around just like roller skating. Did you ever do that for fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing. Um, but this time it's ice skating, so I'm really curious to see if this shoot is going to be fun and romantic or if it's going to be a comedy shoot. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I can only assume there's going to be a few in-action shots and I just got to get my my footing. But what, how do they do this in Florida? Is it an indoor place or how would they do it outdoor if it's like They have, out? I don't know the technology of it, but the last time I went ice skating was actually in LA. It was a Christmas downtown ice rink, but it's outside. I don't know how they do that. So here I am talking all this smack, but I haven't gone ice skating in over 10 years. So, so we'll both have to get used to it again. Because even with roller skating, it takes a minute to like readjust your body and go, oh, I know how to do this. It's, it's not as easy as riding a bike. No, because do you remember when I got roller skates uh -huh. a year ago and we went outside to try and learn and I, it just didn't go well. I haven't put them on since. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm excited to do it. I think it'd be cute photos. It'll and we've fun. been looking for, like, couples photos. And we, we need to do, like, a Christmas shoot, but then mm -hmm. also something else. Just because we haven't done any couples photos in probably, like, three or four years. And Last so that would was be in Pasadena mm -hmm. with our photographer. He was so wonderful. Yeah, it'll be fun to do that. And she said, too, that we could do, you know, stuff off the ice, too. Yeah. And there are two locations we're looking at. There's one that's Celebration, which... We, Beautiful. Yeah, uh, we've shared a lot of celebration, I feel, on our Instagram, maybe even on YouTube. Have we done it on YouTube? Celebration we did. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have this area there, which she's going to, the photographer is going to find out if they um, actually set that up this year because there's so many darling spots to shoot couple stuff. And if not, there's another area called Lake Nona, which I don't think we've spent too much time there yet. Mm-mm. But hey, we're always down to see and explore. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. And I can only assume that will happen probably in the next few weeks before Christmas. And then another tradition that my family has always done that I'm so excited to do because you're here this year, my mom makes the most bomb cookies so she, or bakes them. So she'll bake them and then we all frost them together and they're green and red. You've had them before. Just like traditional like sugar Christmas cookies? Yeah. yeah. And I don't know why these are the most delicious thing in the world, but I, I don't know. They're so tasty. And I, th I think the last time we did it was at my grandparents in the villages when they lived there. So it's just something that I hold very near and dear to my heart. So many great memories. And my mom makes so many of them that it's just like overflowing for weeks after Christmas. But we finally have the girls coming down, our nieces. Um, Julianne is three, so she'll help out. Yeah. Because I've never really baked with her before. But my sister will send me a lot of pictures when she's in the kitchen. And Jules has one of those little like step ladders so she's in there helping her nice so it's cute that'll be I, fun i feel like children and social media are the same when it comes to activities like that <laughs> what do you mean like if there were no cameras and no kids the idea of just making christmas cookies to me doesn't seem interesting <laughs> but to see a three-year-old for the first time or learning and just watching their little brains work and like you're living like seeing this child learn something and enjoy and you're all putting frosting and they're laughing like i can see how that's fun or and or oh who God. look who you're talking to <laughs> if you're taking photos for social media or doing a video or a TikTok, it it has a little more worth it's got a little Ooh. back end you know what i mean Ooh. so what if you're watching a child do it for the first time and you're making a video document it's perfect it. it's perfect <laughs> I went from thinking, what can I be doing while the ladies are baking cookies, to now, wait a minute. I'm documenting the experience. I'm going to document the experience <laughs> and give it that little more oomph. Yeah, I, I think it'll be cool to kind of create some new, I'm like half kidding. 
Um, <laughs> it would be cool to kind of create a tradition because this is going to be the first time, like with the whole family together in a long time, but with the with the little ones. Yeah. Because they just they add a different element that I feel is what I felt growing up. There's it's always about different them. ages. Yeah. You had the adults, but you had the kids, and everyone was a different age, and it kind of makes it. Um, a different feeling like if you're if you're just together with family or you're having like a friends giving or something like that but the dynamic of having the Changes. kids there brings that magic of, of, of the actual holiday back into it because I think we all feel the magic and happiness around Christmas but to see the little ones it's gonna be really it's exciting everything well what is crazy so back it was three years ago we went to my sister's for Christmas remember that Jules was just born a few months prior, and my parents, oh, yeah. unfortunately, had to fly down because my my gramps had passed. And so it was just us with my sister and this amazing little newborn, but she was so tiny that that magic of Christmas with a baby, it, it was different because you can't really see her open gifts. You know, it's a newborn, which its own special kind of magic. But that was that year, and then I think we went to your parents right after. We flew to Ohio to see them and spend, like, the new year with them. The next year was the pandemic, so wait a minute. No, the next year your parents came and, to yeah. L.A. So that must have been 2018. That's right. Okay, that would make sense. So, yeah, your parents came to L.A., which L.A. during the holidays, it's a ghost town. So it's a really different vibe and feel, I feel, of the city because everyone's gone. You know, most people who live there have families elsewhere. You know, everyone yeah. transplanted. But um, we ended up going to... What was that restaurant? It's one of our favorites. Firefly. Firefly. And we had a really cool little different Christmas there. And then the next year is the pandemic, so it was just us. And our that... furniture was delivered on Christmas last that's year. That's right. Oh my gosh, that's right. Wow, that took me back. Yeah, we were so happy we got our furniture. Well, they thought, they were like, well, on Christmas we can come. And I was like, yeah, do we're it. So we had nothing to do. It was just us. We're like... Who cares? Like, I want... That's the best Christmas gift ever. We finally got our furniture right. and just put it in the garage. But let's let's talk about our 10... Ooh. Top 10 Christmas films. Now, we did this as a couple. Yes. Um, I have seen all of them but one. But Alyssa is so adamant that this is a great film. Yes, that it I had am. to go on the list. Yes, But we I agreed am. on every other one. Yep. So... We we're... tried to put them in an order, which I feel pretty confident about. But no, they're all fantastic films. We highly recommend. Yeah, right? I, I think they could be interchanged for the most part. Yeah. But these are like, if you haven't seen one of these 10 or you're looking for a good one, we're putting our stamp of approval on it <laughs> that you can yell at us if you don't like it. They're that good. And they're all different like genres kind of too. Um, uh -huh. Let's start off with number 10. This one came out last year on Netflix, Jingle Jangle. We actually did an entire podcast on this because it's such a good yeah, film. Didn't we? It's it's so aesthetically pleasing. Yes. And it is just a wonderful, creative, um, just visual, beautiful movie. I remember just really loving it, and it, it was so heartfelt. Such a great message. It kind of I feel leaves you just going like. Wow, I'm going to go out there and be a good person. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very a, inspirational. It's a great film. Now, I have to take number nine, and then we can... I, <laughs> please, please. Number nine, <laughs> Die Hard. Yes! Now, that's a movie. <laughs> I don't know if there's ever really... That's in probably, like, top ten of all time. Can Die we Hard. watch that tonight? I wouldn't hate that. I haven't seen that in years. I remember it because I've seen it so many times, but... That's a film. Yeah, let's do. Yeah, Die Hard's Die great. Hard. That one's a Bruce classic. Bruce Willis, baby. What year was that 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 came out? Like eighty-eight or ninety, something like that. Oh, it was early nineties. Maybe it was the eighties. I don't even remember. I remember watching it as a kid, and now going back and watching. He had some it. banger films. Die Hard. We're gonna watch that tonight. <laughs> and what do you got for number eight? All right, number eight is Christmas Vacation. You cannot, cannot, cannot do the holiday season without Christmas Vacation. Clark Griswold is one of the funniest characters of all time. I love him. I love this comedy. It's It just makes me so happy in life. Yeah. Like, is he not just the best character ever? Well, anytime you can say a movie and then you get a smile on your face, you <laughs> so just know <laughs> it's so good. Because uh, I'm seeing him in my head, and I'm just seeing all the scenes, and yeah. just, it's just, you just... It's unbeatable. I mean, it is beatable because there are seven more films. Here. There are. There are a couple that that are that are really good. No, number number seven, 
this one I can watch even when it's not Christmas. Four Christmases. Reese Witherspoon, okay. Vince Vaughn, just epic. There's Robert Duvall's in it. Um, his uh, There's like a lot of famous faces in it. And then who's his brother? He directed Iron Man. He's the oh, he's MMA the, fighter. He's swingers in Swingers, too, with Vince yeah. Vaughn. Oh my God, what is that guy's name? Keep talking because I got to find his name. Um, yeah, he was in Swingers together. He was in, they were in the breakup together. And now he, he does the Iron Man movies. He was in the movie Chef, which was really good. John Favreau. John Favreau. Favreau. <laughs> Just came to me. John Favreau. But yeah, they another great, great film. What is that game they play in it? That you, taboo. Taboo. I remember when we first watched it, you're like, man, we'll crush anyone if we played Taboo at the holidays. I don't know why I remember that. Just because we know each other so well <laughs> that I feel Taboo would be an unfair advantage for us hey, to play. Maybe we should bring that this holiday season. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a fun game? Yeah, there'll be uh, eight of us. Wouldn't you That's love great. to see your parents and my parents playing? <laughs> yes. Yes. It'll be worth it for that. And I would Brianne love to see that. And Jimmy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, Four Christmases for sure. Number six, this is one that you really love a lot. Uh, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Another it was classic. anytime the beard would grow back. I mean, that's an iconic scene. And he in the doctor, he's like, you just gained a little weight. He goes, you call this a little weight? <laughs> um, I remember him running on the treadmill when I was really younger. Yeah. And I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Well, that would be another good one to rewatch because I feel it's been many, many years. We'll appreciate it much differently yes. now because we were watching it as like kids and like, but now I'd really like to watch the film and see what they did. Do you remember who the wife was in that? Isn't it a very famous act? You don't? I have no idea. I think it's someone who was, here, we'll find out right here. Oops, there you go, Benji. Santa Claus. Tim Allen and that, Okay. Let's find out her name. So she was on Lost, the TV show, Elizabeth Mitchell. But she was not in number one. No, I don't think so. But she was in number two. And I remember watching this. It was 2000, 2002. So right when I was watching Lost, probably. Yeah. And then I came back and watched that once I watched Lost. I go, holy cow, she's in this. But great film. Maybe we could watch both. I mean, we have two weeks, so we can watch one. Weeks, we can watch baby. one a, a night. And then number five is the holiday with Kate Winslet, uh, Cameron Diaz, Jack Black, Jude Law. That is the one that Freddie has never seen, but it's such a romantic, lovely, fabulous movie. And that is another heartwarming, heartfelt felt film. You just watch it and you just leave, and you're like life's good so I think that will be another one it's been years since I've seen that but I think I overwatched it so many times because I was so obsessed with it Even, like that movie is one you can watch not during Christmas you know yeah. what I mean like I think I've seen it so many times throughout the year so that's number five number four is Elf I don't even think that one needs an explanation Elf is will, will always Ferrell. be top five probably in at everyone's list, he goes, right? Santa Claus, I know him. Yeah, Santa, I know him. Yeah, that's really uh, Elf is great. Number three is kind of a curveball. Bad Santa. I would I would have to say that's one of my ultimate favorite ones. Me and my buddy Brett used to like say lines from that film like all the time, back and forth to each other, um, just to see a, a a drunk Santa Claus who's also a thief. It's like just like such a Twist, twist on it on Christmas films it's definitely raunchy, R-rated yeah. raunchy so if that's your kind of film and you haven't time. seen it Billy Bob Thornton like knocks it out of the park uh, and then the top two I think could be interchangeable what do you, what do you think what are the, what think are the top two we agree on number two comes in at the Grinch Who Stole Christmas which that was done with Jim Carrey with Jim Carrey done in early 2000 another incredible film where you can just speak all of the lines and you're reciting them all the time i just <laughs> love the <laughs> one o'clock one o'clock wallow in self-pity <laughs> seven o'clock dinner with me i can't, I can't cancel, cancel that, that again <laughs> yeah that i think even the cartoon from the 60s was amazing they made a new grinch film in 2018 which Did we haven't they? seen like a cartoon we should watch that okay i just i just think that's yet again just a different twist on christmas so I love that. And then number one. Let's see if you guys guessed it. Everybody did. 
Home Malone. Alone. <laughs> Home Alone is the best Christmas movie. The fact that it's I held up so. this long and it never lost its um, Sparkle, charm, charm and... popularity. Now, isn't it true that Macaulay Culkin did this? And he kind of worked a little bit, but this was his main body of work. Is that correct? I don't think he's worked He much. did, like... I mean, he did Home Alone. He did Home Alone, Lost in New York. He did uh, Richie Rich. was a very oh, big movie. Yeah. I think Uncle Duh. Buck is what it was called, too. Uncle Buck was huge. He had that. like a... He was a child star. For like three or four years. And, and then, then kind never of, worked. And then just left, yeah. I saw him on a podcast before. I think it was Joe Rogan's where he lives off of his Home Alone residual still to this day. Really? Because every Christmas, they probably do like... 20 million dollars in rental or something i'm sure he gets wow. like a few Ugh. hundred thousand dollars a year from that maybe more who knows yeah, but um that's insane the one thing he did do i saw as he was older was he recreated home alone in a commercial i saw that yeah, yeah that was i mean he ran with it he's that's who he that's is him but that's kind of cool you know he worked during his I mean, he was a child star, but then he was able to take off the rest of his life. Just kind of be free to do whatever. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting place to be, is, is to be in such a place financially that you get to work. You get the totally. privilege of working in whatever you like, but you don't have to. Right. I think that's a very unique place to be, and I bet you there's a sense of freedom mm -hmm. that if it's channeled correctly can be extremely powerful yeah. some people with a lot of extra free time or too much freedom will go down the wrong path but i sure. think um i think that's really interesting to have done something that such an anomaly yeah <laughs> it's know? just that's, so no it's so great that. but yeah we're curious what, uh, comment below let us know what your favorite movie is what's one that we're missing yeah, that we, we have miss to any? see and then um yeah next uh Next uh, Wednesday, December 15th, we're going to do like a Christmas episode. We're going to make it extra special with decorations and we're going to hang out and chit chat. So um, tune in next <laughs> we'll week. We'll make and it we'll special with decorations. Meanwhile, you're dressed up in your holiday gear. Well, because I'm already in the spirit, you know? I love that though. This is a new and improved Fred. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like very, very excited. He's been Christmas very holiday. into the holidays and I love that. So... So we'll be we'll be good to go. We want to thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful week. Yes. Enjoy the holiday activities, and we will be seeing you next Wednesday. So take care, awesome. everyone.